Hey everyone, Randy here from Voices and welcome back to another episode of Creative 101, the creative series dedicated to you guys, the voiceover talent, the creatives, the audio enthusiasts, the recording engineers. Today we're going to be covering crossfades, when to use them, how to use them, and of course we're going to uncover some of the tips that the pros use to get great results. Plus, stick around to the end of the video to figure out how you can win one three-month membership here at Voices.com. So what exactly is a crossfade? A crossfade is a really simple way to go from one clip of audio to another clip of audio seamlessly. And basically what you're doing is fading one clip out while simultaneously fading the other clip in. So that means there actually is some time in between where the two clips overlap. This technique also shows up in video, except it's called a cross dissolve, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. Now maybe you've heard a DJ fade from one song to another song. That's an example of a crossfade. Or you've watched a movie where the sounds for one scene starts over another scene and slowly fades into that scene. That's also an example of a crossfade. And both of these examples I would consider to be artistic crossfades, where you're combining two greater themes or two larger ideas. But of course, you can also use it as a very precise surgical tool to manipulate your audio. And that's what we're going to cover today. Let's take this vocal that was recorded here. Tune in to the hottest new afternoon radio show. And we have a second take. Tune in to the hottest new afternoon radio show. Coming home with Kara and Sammy on the Lou's number one hit music station, Jump 99.9. And let's say that we liked the second take of the Jump 99.9. So what I'm going to do is grab this and I'm going to just delete all of this here. There are multiple ways that you can get this file moved over here. So now what we want to do is line up this jump with this jump. And now you can see there's this little piece here, which it's just kind of a glottal stop in a way. Like she's, she's just getting her throat going kind of that jump, you know, there's that little pre sound. So we'll keep that because it's part of the performance. It's part of what makes her, her voice unique and what she delivered. So let's delete the sounds here. And what I'm going to do is line up this jump with that jump. And Pro Tools is nice because you can actually see both layers simultaneously. So I'll line that up somewhere right around there. And then in this little valley here, I'm going to put the crossfade. Now, the reason I'm doing it right here as opposed to in the middle of the word is that this is the quietest spot. So this spot right here or even right here is the least invasive on the actor's performance. So if I'm doing it in the middle of their word, that's typically going to give us the worst result. So the best result is where it is the quietest. And if you look there, if I blow this up, this is just basically room sound. And again, that's that's pretty much as quiet as we are right here. So this should be the least noticeable and the least likely to be perceived by an audience. So I'm going to put a little crossfade in there just to tidy it up. And let's take a listen to that. On the Lou's number one hit music station, Jump 99.9. Awesome. I'm very happy with that. Let's talk about the two different types of crossfades that we have access to. So let's make a cut right here. And let's say we want to shorten this sound a little bit. And then I'm going to crossfade right here. Now you'll notice this is what's called an equal. This one is equal gain. And so it's a direct crossfade. So it's, it's a linear crossfade. And then we have equal power, which is a bit more of a curved crossfade. Now, what's interesting is that if I do this equal gain, which is currently on right now, so let's look at the, the highest value of these peaks. Do you see how they're kind of making a line like that a little swoop? If I do an equal gain crossfade, look at those peaks, they start to dip down in the middle. So this is actually not ideal for voiceover. This would be great if you're transitioning between two songs and you want sort of a linear transition between two songs. Generally speaking for voiceover though, I'd keep it on equal power. Here's some tips to get you crossfading like a pro. We typically don't recommend crossfading in the middle of words. It's, it's just not best practice. If you can avoid it, it's always best to crossfade between words at the smallest part of the valley. But sometimes you just need to. Sometimes the first part of this clip is great. The second part of this clip is great. And the only spot where you can cut is right on a word. If that's the case, one of the best places to cut is over an S sound. So the S in an S or the F from an F. Because it's so nondescript, there are no vowels there. It's basically just noise. It makes a great spot to uh, to transition. So let's find that Sally. Coming home with Kara and Sammy. Sammy, rather. Sammy. Right there. So that's the first edit. And let's grab the second one. Coming home with Kara and Sammy. Somewhere right around here. Sammy. There it is. Sammy. That's it. So let's grab that one. Now I'm going to move these back. Uh, let's just delete all the middle stuff. We'll move this back to the other one. And so let's just take half of this S. So 
There's the first S. Here's the second one. Let's just grab it. We're going to plop it down. I'm going to just throw a crossfade in there. I'm going to switch it to equal power. And let's see what happens. Tune in to the hottest new afternoon radio show. Coming home with Kara and Sammy on the loop. Yeah, pretty pretty much perfect right out of the gate. I, I certainly wouldn't notice that if someone played that back to me without seeing that there's an edit there. So with Kara and Sammy with Kara and Sammy. On pretty good. It's actually pretty easy to transition on an S sound. So give that a try and see how it works for you. All right, let's go over some of the advanced tips for crossfading. So one of the best places to crossfade is on what we call a zero crossing. So let's just pick a random spot. Let's go right here and let's zoom right in until it becomes basically a pen stroke. So this is a waveform, basically what it looks like. So this is a positive excursion and this is a negative excursion. And so that action is actually happening in your speaker. So your speaker goes forward and then it goes backwards. And on the blue line here, that's what we call a zero crossing, which is basically the speaker's resting position. So one of the best places to edit is from one zero crossing to another. So what we can do is just take out this piece here and drag these back until they're touching. And this isn't perfect, but see that cross? Actually, that is right on. Let's, let's go with that. So if I play this back, you shouldn't hear that edit. Sometimes you do, but let's take a listen. Afternoon radio show. Let's go back a little further. Afternoon radio show. Yeah, so. Afternoon radio show. Again, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to notice that edit in the context of, of a full mix. But let's let's now do it wrong and let's take, you know, even just a, a millisecond more. Let's go uh, from this high point to this low point here and let's merge these together and listen to what happens here. So you can see Pro Tools is trying to connect that with a line, uh, but that line is not going to sound very nice. So let's take a listen to that. Afternoon radio show. Hear that click? Afternoon radio show. And that's just moving it like a, a half of a millisecond in one direction. So always cross on a zero crossing if you can. That said, let's let's go back to where it was on the zero crossing here, which was seamless. We didn't hear it. I'm still going to get in the habit of putting in a crossfade. Now, one of the reasons is when you compress that file or do post-production elements and bring up those levels, all of those little edits that weren't a big deal suddenly become a little bit more noticeable. So it's a really good practice to get in the habit of applying crossfades, regardless if you hear an issue or not. All right, let's talk about another advanced feature here. So uh, one of the best places to crossfade obviously is in the quietest spots. As I mentioned earlier, this is the least invasive on the artist's performance. It's also the least likely to be noticed on your speakers because the speakers aren't doing much work here. If you do it in the middle of where they're working hard, you're likely to hear that edit much more. We always want to crossfade right in the middle of the silence. And one of the best spots to do that uh, from a music perspective is right before the transient. And that's because a lot of the time you can see the decay goes down and then up really quick. So we want to do it right before the transient. Well, everyone, that's it for crossfades. I hope that this video helps you edit your crossfades like a pro. And I did mention that we are doing a giveaway. We're giving away one three-month membership here at Voices.com. To be entered into this draw, simply comment down below using the hashtag creative101, along with a topic you'd like to see covered in this series. As always, happy auditioning, and we'll see you guys in the next one.